All right, so we get this IKEA tread free LED. It's a simple bulb. Uh, the box says it can be controlled by Zigbee. And according to the manual, it says that that basically we need to make sure that the light source is installed and the main power switch is turned on, blah, blah, blah. So it really requires you some sort of device, I guess, to pair to. But for now, we're going to try to pair it to Home Assistant. So let's try that. All right, so as I mentioned before, we're going to try to pair this IKEA thread free light bulb to our Home Assistant system. So basically, there are multiple ways to do this. Uh, one of the way is basically using the IKEA gateway. So it literally works the same as the IKEA app. So you got a Zigbee gateway. Uh, which communicates with all the IKEA Zigbee devices in theory and then the Zigbee gateway is connected to your Wi-Fi network so whenever you're using your app or if you integrate it to the home assistant using this IKEA thread free uh, application basically all your comments and everything is going through the Wi-Fi channel and then the gateway itself converts all those messages actions or whatever to the Zigbee network so that is one way to do it, but for me, I specifically don't want to do it. So I have a home assistant system already. I'm using uh, Zigbee uh, already for many of my devices, and I don't want this extra hop. So if a device is Zigbee device, I wanted to connect to my home assistant through Zigbee only. Uh, so that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is that I usually found on many other websites, uh, especially on YouTube about people trying to set this up, is that they either use this IKEA app, which as I mentioned, I don't want to use, or they use the Zip, Zip, Zigbee 2 MQTT app. For me, I'm all my devices in my home assistant is basically using the ZHA. These are the two options you have for uh, Zigbee integrations uh, in home assistant. So you either use the ZHA, which I'm going to use, or you use the Zigbee 2 MQTT. So this video is about Pairing this IKEA thread free uh, Zigbee light bulb to Home Assistant using ZHA only. Alright, so I installed the light bulb into its slot. Now I'm going to switch on the light and see what happens. This one. Okay, so it switches on. It, we don't see anything like flashing or something that would tell us that it's in pairing mode. So let's try to switch off a couple of times oh okay I did it like five to ten times I don't remember but now it's flashing so it's probably in pairing mode now so let's go to home assistant okay since the light bulb was flashing it was indeed in uh, like connection mode or discovery mode so you can now click on the Home Assistant for Zigbee Device Discovery and it will eventually show up. So it, they do the interview, we do the configuration and at the end of the day you are going to see what I'm seeing here. So the light is added. I, I set a name for this as Smart Bulb IKEA. You can set it as uh, in any way you want. And as you can see on my camera on the top right corner of this video, I can actually switch it on so it eventually works and then I can switch it off. So that is a very basic feature, but for me that's the most important one because at the end of the day I want to integrate this light with a motion sensor so whenever I come into my unit or I go close to the door uh, then the light will go on and then when there is no movement there the light will go off. So uh, the interesting part here is that if I switch on the light and I just check the light so there is some level setting here uh, which no matter how I set, as you can see I'm setting it, but the light bulb doesn't really react. So some of, sometimes this kind of configuration is not necessarily for the actual control of the, the, the device, but some sort of configuration for like startup or things like that. So even if you encounter the same situation that you're not able to set anything here, don't be uh, frustrated, it might still going to work. So the way how you can try to test it is to go into uh, your uh, overview view. So you can go to the default uh, overview and let's see if I add it there. So if I go to the dashboard, uh, 
and I'm opening the default open overview then okay okay so it's here so as you can see I have a lot of things here but don't bother for now so let's try to add this lamp this light bulb so add a card and then it slowly comes up so I want to add a light entity isn't there any ah this one because I want to try to set the light so once it's added then I can look for the light bulb so this is the light bulb we just added so it's a smart bulb IKEA light uh, the name it doesn't matter we can leave it like that the thing also doesn't matter I just change it to minimalist because I usually use minimalist I don't use this uh, dashboard but I'm going to also show you how to configure this in minimalist so there's a default action all are cool I just leave everything like this so let's save it and it's going to be added now I'm done so let's see where is this guy okay so can I switch it off I can switch it off that's good. that's working so now if I play with the gauge then oh it actually works you see so that's the thing so eventually if that part of the Zigbee configuration doesn't work it doesn't mean that this guy is not going to work here so I can oh and it works perfectly so eventually we are successfully added this light bulb through the ZHA integration into Home Assistant uh, and now I'm just going to create an automation so this one uh, is now switched off so I switch off the light uh, I actually show you my uh, actual minimalist view so I got the entrance for these things and I have a motion sensor there as you can see the motion sensor is clear and there's occupancy is also clear because nobody is there as you can see and I can also switch on the lights from here so I can also play around with the with the intensity of the light so I just leave it like that and then eventually I can go to the automations and then I look for the entrance light switch on the entrance light so I created already this automation it's very easy to create so I have a motion sensor and once it detects uh, motion or I also have a, a door sensor so I also wanted that even if I'm not at home but when I come home and I open the door then even without the motion sensor being uh, able to recognize that the door was opening the door sensor also sends a trigger to my home assistant that the door is open now so the light should uh, switch on I also have a, a condition here because I don't want the light to always switch on at any single time because if there's enough light in, in, the, in, the, in the room I don't want it to go on so basically you can create an end if here so I set the time to this so don't bother now it's actually set to my time zone but my browser doesn't show my time zone my browser is set to the UTC time zone so that's why the time zone here is a little bit screwed up but don't worry about that so you can set your time uh, between when it is going to be working or not or you can also set the illuminance level for the motion sensor I have there which needs a little bit tweaks and configurations because you don't really know what is the illuminance at any certain time so you have to check the illuminance sensor for your uh, own uh, home and your own you know your country or the continent you're living in to see what is the level that you should set I recognize that basically when it's dark inside my room or inside my unit the luminance level is below 10 and everything is uh, when it's above 10 then basically uh, it's it's uh, it's light enough so I don't want to switch that on so then as you can see then I can create the action here so so the smart bulb IKEA light is going to be turned on if all these conditions are met so basically let's see how it works so if I go close to the light bulb there's a motion sensor uh, actually at somewhere close to the display so let me go there and then uh, what you will see is there's a motion sensor here so I just come here and the light went on so it's on and if I move out of course it takes uh, a couple of times for I mean it takes a couple of minutes uh, not maybe not minutes but like 10 to 20 seconds when the motion sensor clears and then 
let's do the other automation when the motion sensor clears then it should switch off the light so there's another automation that I created here which is the switch off light it's basically the same or even uh, easier than the previous one so when the motion sensor stop detecting motion or there is also an occupancy sensor as well so either either one uh, basically becomes non-occupied or non non detecting any motion then I just switch off the light bulb so there's no other condition that has to be there I mean you can add conditions like if the lights is actually on then you switch it off but even if it's off you can still send uh, another message like off again and off again and off again it doesn't cause any problems so it's the simplest way you just don't have any uh, condition there so once those things are cleared then just switch off the light and that's it and the last part of the video let me show you how you can add uh, the this light card to the minimalist if you are uh, a fan of minimalist but I think if you are a fan of minimalist it's quite easy but just uh, let me show you. So first of all, we have to identify what is the entity name of this light. So you have to go to the integrations. Uh, then you go to your Zigbee devices. Then you select this IKEA light bulb. Um, sorry, not even here. You go to entities. And then you select, let's just filter on IKEA. So I also have an IKEA remote control as you can see, but there's the IKEA bulb, so there's the light. So this is the name of that specific entity. So it's light.smart underscore bulb underscore IKEA underscore light. It came from the name of course that I gave to the entity itself, but it created this uh, unique entity for this. So then uh, we can go to the uh, minimalist setup so let me change it to the minimalist um, sorry not the minimalist but for my code so I can go to the VS code uh, which I'm going to use for setting this up which is this one so uh, you can see I have a lot of cards here but basically this is the card that I added so that's the light card. Uh, this is the entity what you can set. So this is the one that we just uh, checked in the entity um, part from uh, Home Assistant. And basically that's it. So I enable a slider for it because you can control the light uh, power, right? So we need a slider. You can enable it as a horizontal. It actually means that the button and the slider are not going to be uh, in a vertical setting it will be a horizontal one next to each other which you can you know like you can condense your uh, your layout to be smaller then there is no reason for enabling any color because this is just a simple color light so there's no multicolor option so I switched it off uh, and then they, these are just basic things so I don't want to enable the collapse mode collapse mode means that when the light is not on then the slider is not shown but since they are in the same line I just switched it off I don't want every time that they you know the layout just jumps and then collapses and jumps and collapses it doesn't make sense for me so that's it so then uh, when you go back to your home assistant uh, then you can see uh, everything already so let me go back to that part which is going to be not this one but uh, where is that ah here so then you can go here and then you can just refresh, you know, and then you will eventually see everything. So these are in one line uh, and you can enable it here and then it's enabled as you can see or you can switch it off. So that's it. I, I hope you can do the same thing for you. And you can see that basically this whole light bulb I bought it for like $9. It was a nine Singapore dollars. So it's probably like six to seven US dollars or euros so it's very cheap uh, and it's totally work uh, with Home Assistant and the ZHA integration so it's a good buy